I'm Jennifer Lim from the University of Illinois, where I serve as the Marion Schenck Chair in Ophthalmology and Vice Chair of the Department, as well as Director of the Retina Service. I'm also a UIC Distinguished Professor of Ophthalmology, and it's my pleasure to be here today. Farisimab is the first bispecific antibody, and it inhibits not only VEGF, but also angiopoietin-2. And we know in diabetes that VEGF is not the sole cytokine. In fact, there are a lot of other cytokines, and angiopoietin-2 is one of those cytokines that's involved. We know that when angiopoietin-2 is present, it destabilizes the TI2 receptor, basically knocking off ANG1 and potentiating not only the effects of VEGF, but in itself also leading to leakage and inflammation, and in some cases, fibrosis. So it's a good idea to inhibit both the angiopoietin-2 and the VEGF systems. The primary endpoints for the furosemab studies, basically Yosemite and Rhine, uh, was the mean change in visual acuity at weeks 48, 52, and 56. It was an average of those weeks. And as I said earlier, the mean endpoint was achieved with furosemab being non-inferior to a flebrocept. Secondary endpoints included the change in the central subfield thickness at that same time point, visual acuity and CST change at two years, the presence or absence of interretinal fluid and subretinal fluid also at year one and year two. And there were several other secondary endpoints. Basically for the secondary endpoints, the furosemab performed very well compared to a flebrocept. There was better drying overall with lower CSTs in comparison to a flebrocept. Visual acuity at year two was also non-inferior just as it was in year one. There was also extended durability seen with a significant proportion of patients being able to hit Q12, about 72%, and being able to hit Q16, approximately over 62% of the patients. Now, of course, in the flebrocept arms, you couldn't do this because those eyes were dosed on label Q8 weeks. Also, with regards to the drying effect, there were comparisons that were done, and it was found that the furosemab treated eyes had better drying compared to the aflibercept treated eyes. The impact of furosemab on the treatment of diabetic macular edema, I think, will be pretty significant. We're going to be able to achieve longer inter-treatment intervals. That is, patients won't have to come to the clinic as often after they're loaded and they are able to hit these extended dosing intervals. And as a result, I think patients are going to have better quality of life and they're going to have a lower impact for their family as well because they won't have to come as often. And then also because of the better drying effect, I'm hopeful that there are gonna be significant proportions of patients who could never be dry, who now will achieve a drier retina and also be able to achieve an improvement in visual acuity as well as a lower treatment burden.